guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're here for the first time and i hope you're going to be a part of this family by clicking the red subscribe button down below if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for the continuous support it goes unnoticed and i love you guys all so 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 much anyway guys as you might have seen from today's title i am doing a sit down video and i'm talking about something that has really been in my heart for a couple of days and for some weird reason i also stumbled on my q a that i did last year and and on there I went through the comments and there were a couple of you guys that were saying oh can you please elaborate or expand on the confidence question and that's why we are here today to talk about insecurities confidence and fitting in because you know what as women if not all of us we go through the most when it comes to dealing with insecurities self-worth confidence it's just a lot and so that's why we're here today and I hope you guys are going to appreciate and enjoy this video so let's get into it talk about insecurities like i feel like a lot of women if not all deal with insecurities on a daily we deal with lack of confidence fitting in there's just a lot that we deal with and i wanted to take you guys back to a time in my life when my confidence or my lack thereof and my insecurities had really heightened and this was back in varsity my varsity years throughout my varsity years and to backtrack a bit like in my high school guys i was a really confident girl i worked hard and i was really good at my studies and i think also the contributing factor to this was that you know i was surrounded by people that looked like me and people that came from the same backgrounds and as me people that lived in the same area you know we spoke the same language like Sasutu was our first language English was my second language and it was taught by uh, a black teacher so <laughs> so everything was perfect until I started varsity and it was a whole new world for me because I got exposed to a diverse group of students like students that came from well off background students who had cars students of a different ethnic group so it was just a new world for me and not to say that like Nikola Bonalokhua for the first time or I saw a white person for the first time but like living in the same environment because I stayed at race as well and just sharing the same experiences so for me that was a new um, experience altogether and that's when my insecurities like really heightened there at that time because I started like comparing myself with other students who dressed really really well who had cars who you know changed their hairstyle every two weeks whatever the case was and growing up I didn't get everything that I wanted just for just I had everything that I needed like if it was cold I did have a sneaker but I wasn't gonna buy a Nike or Adidas or Puma sneaker just because it's in fashion you know like it didn't make sense um, for my parents um, because it was not that important I did have like a jacket for when it was cold but I was not gonna wear like a fancy trench coat you know um, so that's how I grew up and for me to experience like all these other students with all these things that was like a very different for me and I think I also was shocked when I saw um, one lady at Rez who like had a perfume or a fragrance and I think at that time it was like just about 500 rands and for me it was like whoa like some kids are living it up out here because to me a fragrance was like something that was very luxurious and it was way out of my reach so I felt like yo people are living it up out here so that time was a very challenging period in my life because um, I got exposed to these things and I stayed at Rez so you can imagine that um, the experience was like first hand but I told myself that you know what I want to find the one thing that I'm really good at and focus on it and excel and for me that was my studies I knew that I was really good at you know my studies I was doing so well so that's exactly what I was gonna focus on and block out everything else you know and when I was walking out even though I didn't like wear brand new clothes I knew that I was like very smart and I was doing well in class you know at least I told myself that if they look at me and they're like oh her t-shirt is ugly or whatever but they, they but then they'll also say oh but at least she's doing well in economics so at least she's doing well in uh, business studies you know so that's the one thing I told myself that if I'm not gonna be 
good or if I'm not gonna have everything else then I'll have this one thing you know and it really worked in my favor I focused on my studies and I studied really hard and I think between my undergrad or postgrad one of my degrees I graduated with a distinction I can't remember which one so yeah for me I just told myself that if people were talking about me and I mean like people didn't care because people were living their lives but if you're dealing with insecurities of course you think that people are always like looking at you you know looking at how you're dressing if that's something you're insecure about you'll think that people are noticing it whereas in actual fact some people might really not care I just told myself that if they are talking about me at least at the end they'll say oh but she's doing so well in you know in whatever subject and I thought that I was done dealing with these insecurities until I started working and, and oh my god like <laughs> That was a whole new world altogether. I met people from all walks of life, um, different varsities, you know, like um, that were prestigious, and so their English was like very polished. And now I'm all big. Oh, for me, English was my second language, and I was taught English by a black teacher. So you can imagine, give what English education mean? It's education, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that again. But like, um, when you when you're still trying to find yourself, you compare yourself with like a lot of people, especially as you start seeing that people are different to you. So yeah, the first couple of years when I started working were also very challenging for me because I started comparing myself with like some of my peers because they were well spoken, they spoke better than I did and I'm putting it in inverted commas because I really don't like that word but that's a topic for another day and I started feeling like I don't belong there I can't fit in and I don't deserve it I'm not good enough to be there but then there were a couple of books that really carried me through those years in my life and I wanted to share them with you guys today as well these are some of the books that really carried me through that phase in my life and the first one is this um, book the confident woman I love this book so much it's by Joyce Meyer and the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz like if it weren't for this book I honestly don't know where I would be today and I actually highlighted some of my favorite um, lines or things that she says in this book that I want to share with you guys today if you are struggling with confidence and these are some of the things that I go back to whenever I feel down or I feel like I'm not good enough and she says here where he guides he always provides he, if god is asking you to step out into something that is uncomfortable for you i can assure you that when you take the step of faith you will find him walking right beside you when you want to do something don't let yourself think about all the things that could go wrong be positive and think about the exciting things that can happen your attitude makes all the difference in your life and then she also says that um i can say for sure that God will prepare you in whatever way he chooses. It may be formal training and it may not, but God will use everything in your life to train you if you're willing to be trained. God does not always or even usually call those who seem to be qualified because most of the time we disqualify ourselves because we feel we're not good enough we don't deserve it we don't belong but she says here God does not always or even usually call those who seem to be qualified and the Bible says that he purposely chooses the weak and foolish of the world in order to confound the wise and that's in Corinthians and that's why I like this book because she makes reference to um, the Bible as well so this book really really carried me and the one thing that I told myself was that you know what if I'm not going to be confident in myself or my abilities then at least I'm going to be confident in God because if he chose me even though I feel like I, I do not qualify then he clearly sees something in me or he wants to use me for a greater purpose and I'm going to allow that I'm going to allow him to use me for whatever it is that he feels I am fit you know I am fit for and once I started changing my perception like I found a bit of healing and the other thing that I also you know just like to talk about when it comes to confidence is that since I became a parent like I look at my child and I see this perfect creature like this perfect little creature even though she's naughty or she chats back or whatever the case is but she's perfect in my eyes she's flawless i love her with all of my heart if she does something and i reprimand her i do not stay mad at her like immediately it's all forgotten and be happy again and i imagine if she were to come to me and say i'm not good enough i don't deserve this i'm not beautiful i'm not worthy or whatever the case is and she says things that puts her down 
I just think how heartbreaking it would be for me to hear those things from her. So imagine how it must be for God when we tell ourselves that, oh, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve to be here, I will never be as beautiful as so and so, or whatever it is that we tell ourselves. Imagine how heartbreaking it must be for God when He looks at us and He sees perfection. And when I started thinking of it that way, I was like, you know what? Actually, God thinks that I'm perfect and He doesn't care what I've done. He's always there to wipe my tears and He's always there to hold my hand and to pick me up. And in this book, The Four Agreements, um, it's a very popular book. So if you haven't read this book, you guys, you definitely have to. The first one is Don't Take Anything Personal, I think. No, the first one is Be Impeccable With Your Word. And then the second one is Don't Take Things Personal. And then um, the third one is don't make assumptions and the last one is um, do your best but I'm just gonna read from the first agreement where he says the word is not just a sound or a written symbol the word is a force it is power you have to express and communicate to think and thereby to create the events in your life the word is the most powerful tool you have as a human it is the tool of magic but like a sword with two edges your word can create the most beautiful dream or your word can destroy everything around you if your word can destroy everything around you and you keep telling yourself that i'm not good enough i'm not worthy i don't deserve it imagine how much damage that creates as opposed to when you speak words of affirmation upon your life to manifest exactly what you want your life to turn out like like telling yourself that you deserve whatever you worked hard for you're good enough you're beautiful you're smart you know all the good things that you want to see about yourself if you start telling yourself those things and you start creating a beautiful life and that's exactly some of the things that I started doing um, that I want to see upon my life because that's exactly what God wants us to be to see ourselves the way he sees us and I think since I started changing my perception and it came after a while guys like I said this is a journey I started like reading books I spent time with God praying reading the Bible I also spent time with myself just to do some self introspection and look at my demons and confront them and I also started being vulnerable and and opening my heart and just sharing with my loved ones that I trust my insecurities my confidence issues and right now I'm not saying that you know like everything is perfect or I figured everything out but I know who I am and I know how God sees me and I know what he thinks of me and that for me is enough even during those times when the devil tries to whisper some things in my ears like oh you're not good enough or whatever I do not listen I will hear that he's trying to say something and I will hear what he is saying but I will not listen to it and I will not take it and bring it to life and make it about me and if people pick on those things that you're insecure about just remember to not take things personally and actually this is the second agreement in this book and I just want to read something for you it says don't take anything personally if someone gives you an opinion and says hey you look fat don't take it personally because the truth is that this person is dealing with his or her own feelings beliefs and opinions that person tried to send poison to you and if you take it personally then you take that poison and it becomes yours even if someone says something positive to you and they say wow you look good if you don't believe that you are beautiful you're not going to believe what that person is saying so it has nothing to do with what the next person says but what you believe in your mind and what God tells you so on that note I'm going to end this video I really hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did remember to give it a big thumbs up comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and yes there will be a couple of more sit down videos like these in the future so if you enjoyed this one then there's definitely more coming and on that note you guys I hope you really enjoyed it I'll see you in my next one very soon bye guys